Theo Vaughan and Tony Hinchcliffe sat down and basically had some words to say about the whole Brenda Shaw, Bobby Lee stuff. And, you know, it's kind of kind of trite now. It's kind of all past, but it's interesting to hear their thoughts about the whole thing and what they kind of saw of it from look, kind of looking from the outside in. And again, I'd like to stress, I'd like to stress, I'd like to stress. I still find it very interesting how no one really makes a fuss about the fact that Brendan tried to fuck his supposed comedy industry friend or peer girlfriend or basically de facto wife at the time behind his back whilst he's in a relationship himself. No one makes a point of that. That's not something that people say that, oh my God, if he tried to do that to me, I would never talk to him again. It's not that. It's just more so about the drama and the be ha ha he he. Which makes me think either Brendan still has the kind of pull and the influence of Joe Rogan's name that people are afraid to really say what they think so they kind of just laugh it off or B it means that maybe Kalila is known to be a bit of a whore behind the scenes and she maybe has slept with other comedians you know who who weren't Brendan while she was with Bobby Lee which is why they're not going to town with that because they know that they were wants to partake or they would like to partake or they know someone that did partake so it'd be hypocritical to them to kind of throw his feet over that because they've heard of it themselves because no one really mentions it anymore no one says it at all like oh but that's pretty fucked up like i mean probably he's meant to be your friend and here you are trying to fuck his girl no one says that it's all just i don't know oh this is really crazy man this is really crazy the drama's crazy but it's never like the actual point of it is that no he tried to fuck somebody else's girl it's not that he tried to fuck Annie Liederman. She's single. Okay, he's in a relationship, but of course, she's single. If she said no, she said no. It's a funny story. Walked me to a truck, but the Kalila stuff is fucked up because, you know, it's meant to be a, what she say? It was around Christmas time. He's opening presents with his kids, but then he's texting her on the sly about, you know, linking up at his truck or taking her out for a spin on the Ferrari. I don't know. Let's, let's see what they said anyway. And then you guys can let me know if you agree or don't agree. <laughs> you think Bobby would have ability to email everybody, especially since he's doing all that browser hunting you know, right around Brendan Shaw's fucking <laughs> since he's stalking Brendan on his own whatever. That whole debacle was oh. that's one of the fun it's almost like a sketch show, you know. Oh. He nearly says one of the most funniest things, right? Imagine. It's so funny that <laughs> Brendan tried to fuck Alila. Why would he try to do that for? He knows she's not gonna fuck him. Yeah. It's like what? That's quite hilarious, isn't it? That goes to show their principles and morals in general as an industry. They just all must be just fucking each other, isn't it? That's probably what happens, isn't it? Don't you think so? They all just fucking each other. Joe Rogan's fucking Burt, Burt's fucking Ari, Ari's fucking Christina P, like Christina P's fucking Theo. Like they're all just fucking each other. That's probably why, behind the scenes. Um, so this is probably not that big of a deal, but they're just not as sloppy maybe as Brendan is. Who knows? When you go watch that, it's like, they had like screen grab, like Brendan doesn't own a computer, which is the funniest part of all of it, yeah, right? Yeah. Like he's like, dude, he's getting this research. They have like screen grabs on his phone. Uh, the whole thing was just. That's hilarious. Though. I didn't know that bit about it, right? He doesn't even own, he doesn't actually own a computer or own his own laptop, which makes sense because, you know, he probably uses his chin for everything and just manages his social media, for, social media and his other stuff on his phone, even though he says he doesn't check social media or social media, as he says. But that's hilarious, isn't it? That whole eight eight hundred pages stuff. So ridiculous. It's wild. Um I couldn't get enough of it. That was like my that was my that was my like thing. I switched from like police interrogation videos to like following the <laughs> yeah. Shab and Bobby Lee thing for a while. It's a, my YouTube algorithms just filled with Bobby Lee, Brendan Schaub, Kalila, like I know. weird. I'm because I can't I There's just, some sometimes I'm on one thing and then sometimes I'm like maybe they did do that <laughs> like it like switches quickly it's like if you're talking to you know your gun toting friend and uh, then all of a sudden you're with your liberal well if there were no guns and this happened you're like sometimes you can see both sides of the argument oh, yeah. I'm like well I mean Brendan you know you some you know hate happens to people people are jealous you know you're a fighter turned comedian and then all of a sudden I saw one clip where. Kalila's like, yeah, I'm a lot better at the internet than people think, and I'll destroy someone. It's like from an episode years earlier, and like I'm like, whoa, this yeah. is all wild because people have made some serious breakdown videos of that stuff. Oh, it's well, I, I'm amazed at how probably XOP, and like I said, it just it does come across like somebody that's trying to f 
basically make you think one way. It's not even like a impartial documentary. It's like, okay, cool. I, my premise is that this woman's sadistic and evil. Here's my evidence proving that. It's not like both sides. It's not impartial at all. It's like somebody that clearly has, um, not has it in, but, you know, sees her in one way, which is fair. He's allowed to see it one way, but it's just like how everybody's latching onto it. It's fucking hilarious, man. It literally is hilarious. You guys are making her seem way smarter than what she actually is. No offense to the lady, but I don't think she's as smart as you guys make it seem. How Like the, uh, what a, there's such a world now with podcasting. There's also like this soap opera undercurrent yeah. of all of it, you yeah. know? I don't play it. You, you would think Kill Tony would be a big poker and like, I get it. People like. And again, can I, can I, can I, can I, can I, can I be honest with this as much as i like to enjoy talking about soap opera stuff it's not a soap opera stuff it's not as much as i say this is like my version of the kardashians because it's just fucking full of nonsense let's be honest it's the same characters all the time that are involved in this nonsense you don't really hear me talking about anybody else apart from this kind of orbit of people who are kind of like in the jre extended universe that's all of them that kind of gaps is because they're the ones that are like constantly in you know gossiping and behind each other's backs being dicks to each other doing nonsense things being detached from reality um not being self-aware uh not reading a room all this sort of stuff right that's what they constantly do other comedians have podcasts and keep chugging along and entertaining their fan bases and doing the you know doing what needs to be done i never talk about them I never do because they just do what so this idea that there's a general kind of undercurrent of you know drama around them it's not true like the ones who are not dramatic who are unproblematic just keep doing what they're doing the ones that are and kind of you know f succeed or fail off the back of it they keep on doing it and that's what keeps this content we're churning look at that kid who's not kid sorry look at that guy that's got a channel at the moment who's doing pretty well for himself he just started what's his name um two ladies to try just scan his videos and look at the thumbnails. It's the same people most of the time. There are some maybe some throwback stuff he maybe will explain, but for the most part, it's all the same people that are involved in the same drama week in, week out. So it's not as if like, you know, we're out here making things up and adding narratives to it. It's just what you see. It's just what you see. You report on it, you talk on it, not report on it. I'm, I'm not fucking Don Lemon. Or whatever his name is. is it Don Lemon or Don Cannon? No, Don, Don Cannon's a producer. But whatever, do you know what I mean? It's like it's just watching clips online and just laughing at them. That's all it is, really. It's not that deep. But again, these guys, man, they're like they're a little bit they're a little bit um what's that word called? They're allergic to like not criticism but pushback. They just want you to like sit there, watch them, consume what they watch, um, get entertained by it and leave. They don't want you to ask any questions or to have any kind of retort back or say your opinion. It's really strange to be honest. But hey, what can you do? Like drama, but I don't want, I, I've always looked at it like if you play that game, those are the types of fans you're going to get. You oh, want to You want to be drama, you want to do gossip, you want to do this, you're going to end up, then you're not even in the comedy world anymore all of a sudden you're in the drama world you know what i mean yeah. and i look at some of the people with successful youtube shows and podcasts that aren't stand-up comedians and i see them doing that yeah a like lot. ethan klein show does yeah. that a lot yeah i notice they get a lot more like but it's it, he's he does a great show yeah. <laughs> i like the fake fucking la disclaimer ethan klein does a lot of drama and he's really bad at that and he's one of the worst ones yeah but he's a great show great guy never met him <laughs> and ethan's a you know we've had some great conversations man he's an extremely See? deep guy i love the la platitude you can't just say your opinion you have to kind of preface it with like a great guy good guy good guy beast of a dad <laughs> is that what you just insulted me <laughs> you can't call me a beast of a dad now um but yeah the, i think that's just their world i guess it's also what is your world right you know and what do you like like some people they like that right all right mate all right i guess we all like stuff in it <laughs>